What's happening, folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Uh Huh. And we're going back to their third studio album, Stay on These Roads, 1988. Um, and it's funny, you know, I'm we're heading into the second half of the album now. This is the sixth tune that we're up to. Um, and I'm sort of savoring this glorious synth pop, um, you know, sort of vocal power uh, flavor. And again, over the first three albums, I've noticed continuity, but also new directions and sort of expansions, um, so that this album, it doesn't sound exactly like Scoundrel Days, but as I said, um, there are elements that sort of, um, I can feel the continuity, I can feel the connection, and again, there are also moments where, you know, it's sort of going in a direction that wasn't like anything I heard exactly on Scoundrel Days or Hunting High and Low. Uh, but I am aware, as multiple people have pointed out, that we're getting close to a major stylistic shift, so that by the time we get to the next studio album, the sound is going to be more guitar-driven, less synth-oriented, um, and just sort of, you know, a bit more, like, rock energetic, so I'm aware of that, uh, and I'm looking forward to it, but at the same time, I am savoring this glorious synth-pop quality that, again, I had a very limited sense of who AHA was before I started this deep dive, um, so now that I'm aware that they made amazing synth pop, you know, above and beyond any possible understanding I had just based on that one, you know, song, the interaction with their one song that I knew, um, I'm, again, I'm sort of savoring it, uh, before I get to the next album. So yeah, big ups to their synth pop sound of the 80s, looking forward to the guitar sound of the 90s, and eventually, from what I understand, uh, sort of return to a more synth-driven sound, although in a slightly different um, flavor or framework uh, eventually, you know, after the 90s, so looking forward to it all, but I am cognizant of, you know, we're on the cusp of a major shift, and so I am sort of, you know, I'm going to enjoy the kind of synth-pop sound that I've come to know and love from them over just, you know, the albums that I've been listening to already. Enough talking about that, uh, so yeah, we're up to a tune called The Living Daylights. Um, you know, it's a phrase that's often used in relation to, like, physical pummeling, whether it's, you know, retributive or punishment, um, or just a result of sort of the unpredictable f vicissitudes of the physical world, um, normally you hear that phrase in the context of, you know, being beaten out of you. He's had the living daylights beaten out of him. You know, daylight, often, you know, people conceptually, like metaphorically, it's related to, like, life and vitality, certainly for plants, but even for, you know, um, other types of li living organisms that, you know, are sort of vital and dynamic with the sort of energy and um, nourishment that the sun provides, and then that's contrasted with the darkness and cold of nighttime, the absence of light. So, to say that someone has the living daylights beaten out of them would suggest that, you know, the, the vitality, the sort of, like, nourishing, motoring um, energy um, that, again, is sort of used in a metaphor in the idea of, like, daylight is then taken out of them so that they're lifeless, it's cold, it's black, it's dark, um, instead of, again, sort of invigorated. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, maybe that phrase, the living daylights, is used in another context, um, but my, you know, sort of in experience with it, when I've encountered it, it's almost always been in relation to, like, physical pummeling, whether, again, that's in a direct, you know, one person attacking or punching another person, or in terms of like, oh, you know, you've just been beaten up by life. I, you know, you had the living daylights, you know, knocked out of him when he was out in the world. So we'll have to see. It might not have anything to do with um, either of those sort of manifestations of that kind of concept. But I'm unaware of any other source or origin of the phrase. So um, perhaps I'm, I'm not privy to or I'm ignorant of an important touchstone here. But let's get to it. This is AHA uh -huh, and the tune is The Living Daylights from their 1988 album Stay On These Roads.
way too high. saying the phrase but I'm waiting for like some more context. I'm still not quite sure what's happening lyrically. Again, it's another section where it's very like moody and like I can imagine a narrative their instrumental sections are very, like, evocative to me. I keep saying cinematic because it makes me think of, like, an implied story. I don't know what they say. I don't think I heard that right. Of their songs were like it fades while Morton's either just hitting like vocal heights of insane quality and or there's an awesome guitar solo happening so again I realize these are related these decisions are related to limitations of you know media format or the medium um, as well as you know uh, label and sort of um, producer decisions and so on but um, yeah again like when Morton is singing beautifully and or the guitar is um, sonorously wailing up in the heights, um, it seems a cool thing to fade. Uh, regardless, it's a cool tune musically. Uh, lyrically, I picked up less of that than most. And again, it, like in most of the songs, you know, I'm only catching some of the lines. I do have to listen to them again and or get some great insight from uh, the fellow um, AHA people who've come um, to share their knowledge and love of the group with me. Um, but that one in particular, like I was catching like little couple word tidbits. I know they said the phrase of the song, you know, the living daylights repeatedly, but it was sort of like, in that repetition, it wasn't connected to another line where I could maybe get an insight in like what they're doing with it. So, um, lyrically got to listen to it some more. Um, do let me know, you know, if there's an angle on it that would be particularly helpful or, or a line that's especially sort of expressive of the themes. Um, but yeah, musically, I enjoyed that a great deal. It sounded like there were a couple parts where they were harmonizing all oh, again. Maybe it's Morton's voice like double or even triple, but again, it felt like there were like three voices at one part. So I feel like that that was them properly harmonizing. Let me know if I'm wrong. Um, and again, I, I, it's funny, like, it had, again, a sort of, like, energetic synth-pop sound, and I'm like, 
again, I'm sort of like savoring and basking in um, this flavor just because, um, you know, I want to sort of get the most out of it before we get to the next album. And, you know, again, um, I imagine on some level there'll be continuity, certainly with the wonderful voice. Um, but yeah, my understanding is that we're ready for a shift once this ends. So I'm just sort of savoring this and thinking about uh, the synth pop sound that I've heard different variations of, but over the last um, two and a half now albums. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of this tune. Um, looking forward to a couple that are coming up. Um, you know, Jesper was mentioning one song, and I think someone else said, um, what is it, the the Out of Blue, uh, Green? There's like a couple colors in the name of it. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Um, but yeah, we're coming up to uh, a couple songs that I think people have been uh, looking forward to. Um, yeah, so the song that I'm thinking of is... Uh, out of Blue Comes Green. Um, I think a couple people have mentioned that one, so I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of this tune. Other than that, I will see you next time. Peace.